Uh, we've got a drift net here and that's constructed with this netting and these pegs and it's designed to catch uh, small reptiles and invertebrates and what happens is they'll walk along and there's a bucket here and they'll be, be drawn along the fence line and fall in the bucket and we can then capture them and what we've done to build this is dig a trench in and we've buried about 10 centimeters of the net in the ground and, and just packed it down and we've got these metal pegs that are holding it up and this fence is going to draw small reptiles and invertebrates along until they fall into the bucket. Now it's important that the bucket is flush with the soil surface because uh, even a couple of millimeters, even though it seems small to us, that's massive for a small insect and it might actually stop them getting trapped. Um, so this transect goes along for five buckets worth, uh, they're about 10 meters apart and in the buckets there's also bits of habitat for them, there's a cup and some material and a polystyrene bu uh, block in case it rains then they won't drown. So there's lots of stuff down there and it's still alive, hopping around. Check. Oh look there's something kind of strange, anyone know what that is? Who said something? Flatworm? Yeah, who said that? I did. Flatworm. Oh, yeah. So there's a couple of ants on there, we're just trying to get all these things in because what we're going to do when we go back to the lab is we're going to quantify these sorts of things in here to set up the data to compare the different sites. So number of ants, number of spiders and all those sorts of things. Again with the little cloffy thing, pull it out, give it a good shake and there's an awfully large earthworm in there. Which is not surprising since given how wet it's been overnight and the fact that we've dug all this stuff out. Now, with, the, with getting the rest of this set stuff out, some things are going to be really easy. It's just a matter of picking up and throwing it in. But because it's going to be more difficult than the past in terms of putting material into here, you're going to have to just sort of brush it in and use the, use the brush. We've got a number of different types of brush to brush it into a corner or something. Away from the water, because there is water pooling. Just use the brush to physically brush stuff into a corner. And once you've got stuff brushed into a corner, you can probably just put this down into the bottom of the trap and brush it in. Otherwise you can pick it up on the brush and brush it into your particular thing. So what you're trying to do is get out everything you can see that's down there that's invertebrate or vertebrate. Now the thing that you're going to do in terms of the recording is nothing with almost all of this. The only thing you're going to record on your data sheet if you get it at this stage is a skink or a snake or anything else like that. But we're not going to get any of those, are we, Chloe? No. I won't say no, but always Hopefully do it the proper way. way. All right? Uh, the, the design of this experiment is basically comparing an open area of open grassland, a uh, burnt forest area and an unburnt forest area. And we've got two of these transects in each one. And we're going to compare the invertebrates uh, to order level, um, because sorting them to species is very complex and time consuming. So we're going to look at them to order level and hopefully we'll see some, some patterns in the, between the habitats.